Hello, everyone. The education tree, which is illustrated here in this figure, provides guidance for designing courses that aim to accelerate sustainability and regeneration through linking inner and outer dimensions of transformation. It illustrates the four essential pieces or key ingredients that courses of this kind should include. We decided to use a tree to illustrate these four essentials because it is a metaphor for growth and connection. So if we apply the four key ingredients, we can grow tall, thicken our trunk and spread our roots wide and deep. And the tree is here also a metaphor for integrated inner outer transformation because it has roots that normally grow below the surface and cannot be seen. So you could say that they represent our inner world. Um, and the parts that can be seen, the trunk, the branches and the leaves, they represent the outer world. However, for the tree to exist, both worlds must exist simultaneously and need to be given equal attention. So the education tree for inner outer transformation summarizes the outcomes of several years of research in the field. Um, we published these outcomes in 2024 in an article titled Revolutionizing Sustainability Leadership and Education, Addressing the Human Dimension to Support Flourishing, Culture and System Transformation. After the article was published, we then continued to improve the layout of the tree and the figure you see here is the latest version of it. In the following, I will now briefly explain the four key ingredients because they form the scientific basis of the MBST course. And I hope that they will also help you in your own teaching activities. So the first essential relates to the content of the course, that is the context, knowledge and information that is given regarding today's sustainability challenges. It is crucial to ensure that participants have a comprehensive understanding of today's poly crisis and what this means when seeking adequate solutions for sustainability and transformation. How we see the world shapes how problems are understood and addressed. Now, given the emergent science in the field, it is therefore crucial that the course helps participants understand the following aspects. That today's societal crises are a reflection of an inner human crisis of disconnection or alienation from self, others and nature that this situation is a result of modern society's dominant social paradigm of separation that has led to a situation where we are increasingly and exhausting and exploiting ourselves, others and the planet. And consequently, that we have to address the human inner dimensions that lie at the roots of today's poly crisis to move towards a more caring and thus sustainable society. And to achieve this, the course's design and its platform need to provide information that helps participants understand that the concept of inner dimensions or mindsets include our individual and collective beliefs, values, worldviews, and the associated inequalities and capacities that influence them. It is also important to clarify that these inner dimensions are related to sustainability in several ways. They can be negatively affected by sustainability crisis, so they become a victim of sustainability crisis, as we can see, for instance, in the vast increase of eco-anxiety. Um, they can be a barrier to adequate action to, due to certain habits of mind and biases that lead to short-term and polarized thinking, for instance. And finally, 
They are also the root cause of today's poly crisis, which relates to our mindset of separation, which I explained before. So together, this ultimately creates a vicious cycle where we are relentlessly and increasingly exhausting ourselves, others, and the planet. And therefore, education and leadership courses must provide information on the role of inner transformative capacities and how we can nurture these capacities to move towards a virtuous cycle of increasing individual, collective and planetary well-being and regeneration. I have listed here uh, the foundations, the most important scientific texts regarding these different aspects. And put together, the first key essential is then to provide an understanding of why individual personal development is linked to collective and systems change. I've summarized the latest aspects also in a five minute video um, and I included that video also here at the end uh, on, on the bottom of the list here. So once participants have gained a comprehensive understanding of the nature of the sustainability crisis we are facing, the need for integrative approaches and methods to address these crises becomes obvious. Um, and this leads to the second key essential, the second branch of the tree, which is about how we get to know or how we learn. So mainstream cognitive teaching approaches are not sufficient. Um, clearly just telling participants to be more compassionate or to feel a deep connection with nature will not work. In accordance with emergent science in the field, the second essential indicates that it is crucial to offer participants a safe space and a balanced mix of cognitive, emotional, and relational practices and methods to adequately address inner dimensions of transformation, nurture transformative capacities, and support their connection to self, others, and nature. And these practices and methods must be carefully designed and combined. And the course need to be designed in ways that support related, regular and continuous mindfulness and compassion based practices, even after the course ends. So when selecting practices, it should not be assumed that methods for inner development automatically or even quickly translate into sustainability advocacy and action on a broader scale. Instead, they must be adjusted to the context of sustainability and be linked to reflections, explorations and introspection on how our inner worlds are intertwined with the dominant social paradigm, our culture and the political and institutional landscape we live in. Accordingly, in the context of the MBST course, the applied practices have been oriented towards sustainability. So, Similar to the way mindfulness-based approaches have been adapted to the context of stress and reduction, uh, stress and depression in the form of mindfulness-based stress reduction and mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, mindfulness-based sustainable transformation has been adapted to the context of sustainability. Based on our research, these adaptations involve, amongst other things, linking mindfulness closely to compassion, gratitude, nature-based approaches, social connection and reflection practices, as this has proved to be particularly relevant in developing more relational perspectives, beliefs and engagement. So together, the different practices and practices and methods that are offered should enable embodied reflections about our way of being, thinking and acting that allow participants to tap into their inner potential to care and commit to affecting change. And this brings us to the third key essential, which is about supporting action taking and designing for change. 
So courses that aim to accelerate sustainability also need to provide related operational guidance. They need to support participants' motivations and intentions for well-being and well-doing so that related actions lead to transformation across sectors and scales. Without such guidance, well-intended engagement might even lead to negative outcomes. So it's really very important. Collaborative action-oriented approaches, platforms or action labs are thus crucial. So they need to become part of the course and they must provide participants with, with conditions that ensure that their inner work um, goes hand in hand with continuous application to their everyday life and their work context. That the design of measures related to inner dimensions of transformation is informed by in-depth knowledge of the different components of inner dimensions and how they relate to sustainability as being a victim um, of a sustainability crisis, a barrier for adequate action and a root cause. Um, that supporting change is not about working on inner dimensions or inner capacities separately from, our, from outer aspects. In fact, working on inner and outer dimensions or on IDGs and SDGs separately misses the point. Instead, it's about designing integrative measures that address inner and outer dimensions of transformation in combination and across all levels, individual, collective and systems. So even if the primary interest may be nurturing inner transformative capacities, related engagement needs to cut across personal behavior, culture and systems change to become transformational. And this requires in turn knowing what aspects have to be addressed in order to mainstream or institutionalize the consideration of sustainability and associated inner dimensions within existing mechanisms and structures. Um, if you go to the website that is website that is listed here um, also on the slide, you will find specific publications in relation to institutionalizing and mainstreaming inner dimensions in ex existing institutions and organizations. Um, so then it's also important um, that the courses provide an understanding or um, support and operational guidance of the need to respond to urgent problems that have to be fixed and at the same time employ approaches that focus on tapping into people's inner potential. So it's always both things at the same time. And finally, to adequately implement the first three essentials, there must be ongoing quality assurance. Uh, and this is the fourth and last branch of the tree. So quality assurance involves the consideration of various aspects. One is the level of experience of the teachers or trainers. Um, the ability to move beyond traditional teacher-centric pedagogy offer new perspectives that challenge mainstream thinking and give a sense of the complexity without overwhelming or confusing participants is very challenging. So delivering here the key essential one and two is obviously very challenging. Um, and facilitators who lack extensive experience with the offered methods or an in-depth understanding of today's poly crisis might do more harm than good to individual well-being and sustainability agendas. Ethical and equity considerations are another important aspect of quality assurance, so the fourth branch here. The geographical context in which the course will be implemented and the individuals who participate need to be taken into account, obviously. Um, and a key challenge in this context is to offer a diversity of methods and entry points for exploring inner outer transformation and at the same time continuously improve and decolonize pedagogy to foster inclusivity and intercultural learning. And um, finally, monitoring and evaluation processes should capture what must be changed to support transformation. So traditional 
um, evaluation questions might not be very suitable or useful. So the focus should be on assessing the relationships and associated integrative approaches that challenge unsustainable norms, cultures, political systems and structures at multiple levels. Um, and evaluation should identify changes in narratives, engagement, mainstreaming and institutionalization of inner dimensions and how people shift from being agents to be changed to being agents of change or change agents. So summing up, um, the education tree tells us that courses that aim to accelerate sustainability, regeneration and transformation should provide science-based context and understanding, a comprehensive learning approach, including a safe space, um, practical guidance for action taking and ongoing quality assurance. And together, these aspects then challenge how we see the world, how we get to know, how we engage and how we ensure quality education to foster deep understanding and action taking that supports personal, collective and planetary well-being and regeneration. Thank you. I hope that this was helpful. Bye.